Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the new composite sculpty feature of Primp Composer for 3DS Max version 1.2. So creating a composite sculpty is very similar to creating a normal sculpt. You can you do it through the sculpt shape uh, create button and it only works currently for planes, uh, editable poly or editable mesh planes. Uh, so let's create an editable poly plane and you see this new section down here composite sculpty what this allows you to do is to create a sculpty uh, an object that is composed of multiple sculpties uh, so let's create one that is uh, composed of two sculpties in the x direction and four sculpties in the y direction that will give us a total of eight sculpties so if we click in the viewport now it will create this composite sculpty and uh, if we look at the uh, modifier panel on this we see that it's it's a sculpty and uh, really there's no indication that it that, that's anything special here until you click on select by element and if you select by element you can see that now this is a single object uh, but it has multiple sub-elements, in this case eight sub-elements, and each sub-element will be exported as its own, as a separate sculpty. So this single object inside of 3ds Max will be exported as eight different sculpties. And by having it as a single object, as sub-object sub elements, uh, we can keep the seams between all of these sculpties uh, really nice and it'll look as like one coherent object. So let's create something with this just to see what the possibilities are. Uh, let's apply a bend modifier to this and I'll give it a, a, an angle of 360 and we'll bend it on the x-axis so that we have a, a tube here. And then let's add a noise modifier to this and we'll make it fractal noise and let's give it something like 0.8 meters in the x direction and say 0.8 meters in the z, z direction so now we have something that looks kind of like a cave or a tunnel or something like that some kind of an organic object but again, it's made out of multiple sculpties, even though we're creating it inside a single 3ds Max object. Let's apply uh, a material to that. We'll apply kind of a marble-looking material so that it, it has a rocky look to it. And now let's export this from Prim Composer will export selected and uh, we'll export the textures and I'll just uh, save it to a project name junk and export so now that was successful and we can see that eight sculpt maps were generated from this single object and one texture which was our material that we applied. So let's go now to Maxport and we'll uh, import it into uh, OpenSim using Maxport. Okay, Maxport is finished. So now I'm going to uh, log in to uh, OpenSim on my local machine using uh, the Second Life Viewer. I I've been having some problems with the recording software interacting uh, with the viewer on startup, so I'm just going to pause it and then come back when the viewer is running. Okay, so now we're in OpenSim, and uh, above the avatar's head, 
uh, we can see this object that we've just imported. And it looks exactly the way it did inside Second Life. And you can see that there's almost no seams in the object. And if we edit this, you can see that it's actually composed of separate sculpties that are all seamlessly connecting to each other. And we can uh, select this and link the entire object. And then we can scale it up. And you can see that what we end up with, if I put it here beside the avatar, is something that's quite large. So it's approximately 40 meters in length, and uh, it's maybe about 20 meters in height. Much bigger than uh, a single sculpty could produce, and it's all done because of the composite sculpty idea and the fact that we can uh, can make a single coherent object out of multiple multiple sculpties <laughs>